We actually started this segment, KSAT Q&A, to sort of separate the fact from the fiction when it comes to COVID-19. That was some two years ago when we started this segment. We're going to get back to our roots right now and talk about some of the fact and the fiction when it comes to current COVID-19 variants that are out there and the vaccine. Dr. Larry Schlesinger joins us. He is the president and CEO of Texas Biomedical Research Institute. Doctor, it's always a pleasure to have you on. I, I want to talk about a Johns Hopkins report that was released yesterday that COVID is still the third leading cause of death in the United States. More than a million people have died from COVID since it hit the country. Are we being too nonchalant when it comes to this and some of the variants that we're seeing? Should we mask up? What are some of the steps we should be taking when it comes to COVID? Well, it's a great question. Great to be with you. Absolutely, COVID-19 continues to be a very serious infection. We constantly talk about in and out of a pandemic or a triple-demic. The truth is we have a serious respiratory viral infection traveling the country still. It's estimated there are about four or 500 deaths due to COVID-19, due to COVID-19 uh, each day. If you annualize that, uh, that's actually a rate of death uh, higher than even a serious flu uh, epidemic. So we still have a serious problem related to COVID-19. And I think we need to be careful. We need to use our judgment. And uh, if we're in a high congregate setting with a high likelihood of exposure, we better be careful, particularly if we're, our immune systems are not normal. So um, I, I think it's something we need to take care of. And one of the uh, aspects of this is the newest uh, vaccine, the bivalent vaccine, which is the one that has been found to be the best protection against some of these new variants. And the uptake of that vaccine is only about 15 or 20 percent. Mm. So we are not doing a good job of vaccinating up and these vaccines have been incredibly important in our fight against COVID-19. I can talk more about that. And let's talk about some of the myths, the misconceptions that currently exist. We're nearly three years into living with COVID-19. And a recent survey from Rasmussen Report said that nearly half of Americans believe that COVID vaccines have probably caused a significant number of unexplained deaths. Is there any evidence to back that up? There is no evidence to back that up. And I have to say, we continue to have misinformation regarding this vaccine, inclu including some recent deaths that have occurred, our football player story. Uh, there is no evidence that this was caused by COVID-19. Look, here are the facts. The data are out now. 1.1 uh, oh, million people in the United States have died from COVID. The vaccine is estimated to have prevented over 3 million deaths due to COVID-19. The vaccines prevented nearly 20 million hospitalizations and over a trillion dollars of cost to the U.S. economy. Worldwide, the estimates are about the vaccines have protected about 20 million people. And guess what? That's what vaccines do. Historically, vaccines against a number of infections has saved hundreds of millions of lives. So these vaccines work. They don't uh, completely prevent infection. We know that already, but we're talking about serious, life-threatening infection, particularly in vulnerable people. Uh, the vaccines are performing well, but we must uh, increase that bivalent vaccine. I, I know Texas Biomed played a, a key role in the Pfizer vaccine, a, and you're working on something now called, and I want to make sure I get this right, a live attenuated approach to vaccine, right. what does that mean? Right, so um, uh, right now we have the mRNA vaccines and they're very powerful, but there's still some question about their so-called durability. They seem to last only a period of perhaps four at most six months. And so everyone's asking the question, what does this mean, Dr. Schlesinger? Do you need to take, a, do we need to take vaccines four times a year? So going forward, we need more durable vaccines that perhaps last a year, just like the influenza vaccine. And we need vaccines that stimulate our immune system to protect it against more of these variants. So broader protection. One of the time-honored approaches for achieving durability and broad protection are so-called live attenuate vaccines. The smallpox vaccine, chicken pox, yellow fever, these are established vaccine strategies. And at Texas Biomed, 
scientists are producing using new technology a form of live attenuated vaccine that's performing very well in the so-called preclinical arena we're excited about this technology it's one of a few that are out there now in terms of increasing that duration and that protection so what we need now is to continue to fuel the research engine going forward so that we can bring these newer technologies that will be more powerful and protect humans. And I'm afraid we're at the beginning of this fatigue where it's people are talking about it less. And guess what? The money starts getting tighter and we can't move these new technologies forward. I think that's our challenge going forward. But I'm excited about this new technology and there's new therapies also in the pipeline that Texas Biomed is working on. We talked a lot, a lot about a live attenuated vaccine right here on Monday in a case that explains with the help of some of your, your researchers. So that was, that was really helpful to distinguish the differences. Before we let you go, I, I wanna ask about the variants that we see that they keep on coming when it comes to COVID-19. There's been another misconception that more boosters mean more variants. Explain why we continue to see different variations of this virus. Yeah, does one cause another? Right, so um, look, uh, vaccines and therapies can put some pressure on the virus uh, that uh, can ultimately help evolve the virus. However, m the vast majority of these variants are being caused by the fact that the virus is circulating, whether you're vaccinated or not enough, and this virus will continue to mutate. So to answer your question, it is not the vaccine that caused the new strain, for example, the XBB 1.5, which is um, really the predominant uh, variant now in the Northeast and about 20, 15 to 20% of cases in Texas due to this variant is not caused by the vaccine. Uh, this vac these variants are because the virus continues to circulate in the population. And what do viruses do? They evolve in you and me. The truth of the matter is the safety profile of the vaccine. Yes, it's not 100 percent. No vaccine is. But when you look at these so-called side effects that are being looked to looked into by the uh, um, uh, FDA and others, they're pale in comparison to all the side effects of having a true COVID-19 infection. 10 to 20% of people with COVID have this long COVID, where now over 200 symptoms have been described, uh, other forms of inflammation. So there's much worse outcome due to the virus than there is to the vaccine. Dr. Larry Schlesinger, yeah, I, I agree that we need to keep talking about the seriousness of COVID. We also need to keep talking about the fact that we need new technology and new viruses to fight not only COVID, but what may what else may be coming down the pipe. Mm -hmm. And I really believe Texas Biomed is going to be part of the solution going forward. We have new partnerships with industry and government that we'll tell you about over time. But I believe we really have that unique enterprise that can really help solve the problem of more protection against these increasing infectious threats. Dr. Schlesinger, President and CEO of Texas Biomedical Research Institute, thanks for sharing some time with us. Keep up to date with all of San Antonio's top news, weather, and so much more by clicking the like and subscribe buttons below. And once again, thanks for watching KSAT.